We're gonna make our challah dough now. So I have a large bowl that is big enough to accommodate approximately a five pound bag of high gluten or bread flour. So what we're gonna start off by doing is four cups of warm water. Warm water meaning it shouldn't be steaming hot. That's going to kill your yeast. If it's cold water, it's not going to kill your yeast. It's just going to take longer for your yeast to proof. Four cups of warm water, liquid measuring cup. We're gonna add sugar. I have two cups here. You don't have to use two cups. The beauty of challah is that you can really adjust it however you want. You want it less sweet, go less sweet. Here's our yeast, four tablespoons of dry yeast. Again, dry yeast doesn't need to be proofed. However, it is a insurance policy, so we know that our yeast is good and active. Sprinkle that over the top, and we're gonna be using the best kitchen tool, our hands. All right, all I'm looking for now is for the yeast to rise to the surface and to see little air bubbles on the top. Yeast is dormant. When you put it in that water, it sort of wakes it up. And then when you add the sugar, that becomes the food for the yeast. So as the yeast begins to eat, it begins to grow. And you could see right now how nicely it's already proofing. Next, we're gonna add two eggs. Eggs are a natural leavener. So if you want a fluffier challah, you can actually add four eggs. You can add three eggs. Again, your recipe right now is your canvas, is your blank canvas. And you can customize it however you want. Two eggs, I'm not even gonna beat them up. And then I'm going to add our oil, one cup of oil, mix that up. And then we're gonna start by adding flour. We're gonna add it in a little bit as a at a time so that it absorbs at an even rate. So this is approximately half a bag of flour, right? And then we begin to mix. I'm going counterclockwise, I'm stirring. All right, here we go. And you'll see that if you've made challah with a mixer before, the amount of flour that you add will vary. Why? Because you're not a mixer. You don't have the horsepower that a mixer has. All right, I didn't forget about the salt. It's right here. I don't add the salt directly to the liquid. There are rumors that salt kills yeast. It doesn't really kill it. It just sort of inhibits its growth. This is pink Himalayan sea salt. I use pink Himalayan sea salt in any yeast dough I make. Why? There's a higher mineral content in pink Himalayan sea salt than regular white sea salt. So for any other baking cookies or cakes, I use fine white sea salt. And for all of my cooking, I use kosher salt. So this is another half bag of flour. I don't wanna add in too much at once. And then I'm going to sprinkle my salt over the top. I have two tablespoons. Again, you can always cut down the amount. You are using. One trick that I've learned is that some people actually add their oil in as they add their flour to prevent the flour from sticking to their hands. It's going to get tougher to mix as the dough starts to come together. Going to add some more flour. All right, once that dough starts to come together, this is what I do. I'm going to take the dough and transfer it onto a countertop and just let it rest for three to four minutes. This allows the flour to absorb whatever water is in the dough and then I'll be able to gauge how much more flour I need. Sometimes I need to add a little bit more oil. Again, your recipe is a guideline. If you're using whole wheat flour, a big mistake is people keep adding more and more flour because they want their dough to not be sticky. Whole wheat flour absorbs water at a different rate. It's much slower. So what ends up happening is people keep adding flour in, they put it up for a rise, and by the time they're done, it is completely rock hard. Another thing when working with whole grain, um, for example, but whether it be spelt or whether it be whole wheat, you are lacking gluten. What's great is that you can actually buy gluten to put into your dough to help with that flexibility, that stretchability, that elasticity that you're going to be lacking. It's approximately one tablespoon of gluten per cup of flour. So over here I had my dough covered up. I covered it up to keep it from drying out. You'll notice that whatever flour was on top is not there anymore. Remember how before it was a little bit, looked like I had added too much flour? Well, what I'm gonna do now is just sprinkle some more and just knead it into the dough. Your dough is really only gonna take in whatever flour it needs. First, I'm going to take challah. So here is my baking sheet. You don't have to put on a baking sheet. You can put it on a greased cafeteria tray. 
or any other baking tray or pan that you have. This ensures that your dough doesn't stick, seals in that moisture. All right, number two, you don't want to rip your dough. You want to use a knife. I like to use these small serrated knives. The teeth on the serrated knife help cut through it nicely so you don't ruin your gluten. Look at those air bubbles. So if you want to be exact, you can use a kitchen scale. And if I'm doing a challah roll, it's usually about four to five ounces. A 10 inch challah pan would use about a pound, if not more of dough. The larger ones, you're gonna use more dough. You also wanna make sure that there's room for that challah to expand. So if your challah is too big and you put it in a pan that's too small, it's gonna warp the shape. So here we have some of our dough and what I'm going to do is make it into a ball. Take my challah dough, sort of bringing the bottom together, the sides to the bottom, and form it into a ball. See it? Once all your dough is on your tray, you want to coat it in oil or nonstick cooking spray, again, so it keeps the dough nice and moist, and so as it rises, they don't stick to each other. Your dough needs two rises. The first rise is after you make your dough, which is what's happening here, or if you put it in the freezer, it halts it. As it defrosts, that's rise number one. Rise number two is after you shape your dough. And you need that time to let your, your strands relax, then you egg it, and then you bake it. Last but not least, you're gonna cover this nicely, not tightly, just nicely, with plastic wrap, just so that there's room for it to grow, and then put it in your fridge. You could even put it in a garbage bag, an unscented garbage bag. The dough is not touching the garbage bag, it's just sealing out any of the cold air from the fridge. So again, 24 hours into the fridge. The third method, what you can do with regards to rising, is halt the entire process of rising altogether. How do we do that? We're gonna put it in the freezer. Putting it in the freezer basically stops everything from happening. So if I have my ball of dough right here, I roll it up, I'm gonna put it on a cookie sheet, I'm gonna put it in the freezer, and then once they're all cold, I'm gonna put everything into a freezer safe, a freezer proof, zip top bag and then I take out the balls of dough as needed. So I took the challah dough out of the fridge. It sat at room temperature for about 20 minutes. You still want your dough to be slightly cool so you're able to handle it. If it's too cold, you won't be able to roll it out properly. Take off that plastic wrap over there. We're gonna start with a five braid challah. All right, so right over here, one, two, three, four, five. I always keep a little bit of flour next to me. The flour, I'm just gonna sprinkle over here. All right, we don't wanna overcoat the strands too much. So here's one ball of dough and what we're going to do is we're going to start we're not going to press out all that air we're going to just start rolling. To get nice smooth strands I spray my hands with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray or you can use some olive oil and that just really helps get everything nice and smooth. So I wear gloves for a couple different reasons not just for sanitary reasons but to create a barrier between my natural body heat and the dough. So I rolled out my strands of dough if you find that your strands snap back when you're rolling them out, all you need to do is put them on the side, spray them with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray, and cover them. It just means that the gluten in the strands needs to relax a bit more. Um, when I slow rise my dough in the fridge, it ensures that the dough has a nice, long, strong rest. I would say keep it in your fridge for up to 24 hours. Anything longer than 24 hours, you're risking the dough beginning to ferment, meaning the yeast has eaten up all the sugar in the dough and there's nothing for it to thrive on anymore. And I'm going to just attach them at the top. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. And this is just a numbers game. You're gonna just have to remember the numbers. So starting from left to right, left one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna move number five between one and two. One goes between three and four. And then we simply twist two over three. Two over the top. And you can actually do this shape, not just with five strands, you could do it with four strands. So you start off with the last strand between one and two, one between three and four, and then two over three. When you roll out your strands, Always make them proportional with your pan so you don't end up with a challah that's too big for your pan or too small for your pan. If it's too small, it's just going to, you know, flatten out. And if it's too big, you're not gonna be able to get that beautiful shape that your challah is gonna give you. This braid is so simple, but it creates such a beautiful challah. And I'm gonna show you different ways of seating it. And it's just magnificent. It's always a showstopper. 
So five between one and two, one between three and four. I could do this with my eyes closed, two over three. So again, you're just memorizing these numbers. Five between one and two, one between three and four, two over three. As you get to the end of this challah, all you have to do is really simply, really beautifully, take whatever you have left and just tuck it under, just like that. And then on the top, you can do the same thing. You can sort of just push it a little bit together. Sometimes your braid gets a little bit lopsided, but you just have to move it around a little bit. I have my greased challah pen. It's real metal. Real metal conducts heat so much better than aluminum. If you want that beautiful high rise with that nice muffin top, you really want to use a real metal challah pen. If you only have aluminum, what I suggest to you is to take that aluminum pan, put it on a real metal baking sheet and bake it that way. That way it's going to bake evenly. So sometimes you'll have your aluminum pan, you'll put it in the oven, you'll bake it, the top will be brown, but the bottom will be completely raw. Why is that? Well, that's aluminum for you, it's not baking evenly. We're gonna take our challah. Your challah is also very forgiving, so don't be afraid to handle it. You just pick it up like so, okay? And we're just gonna put it in our pan. I have some plastic wrap right over here. I'm going to cover my challah dough so it can rise. As it rises, again, we keep it covered so that it retains that moisture and it doesn't dry out. And you'll sort of know it's ready to go into the oven once it hits right around the top. You'll also see this begin to relax more and the, the shape of your braid really becomes defined. Our five strand twist challah is ready to go into the oven. It has risen. As you could see, I told you it was gonna come right above to the edge of our pan. We have some egg wash here. Uh, one egg, two egg yolks, and I put a little sprinkle of sugar or honey inside. I'm just going to brush the top. Gently, you don't want to push out that air. You want to get your challah nice and coated with egg. As it rises, any of those empty spots are going to start showing through. So we have our challah dough over here. Here we have some sesame seeds, and here we have some water. All you need to do is take your finger. I'm going to use my middle finger right here, dip it into the water. Then I'm gonna go dip it into the sesame seeds. And then right on top of the challah, I'm gonna lightly press, all right? As long as those seeds are sticking, you don't need to keep dipping your finger into the water. But once you notice that the seeds aren't as, um, they don't adhere to your finger as well, then just dip your finger back in. And then again, lightly press it. You could do this with nigella seeds, nice black and white striped challah. You can add some za'atar for a nice pop of color and into the oven it goes.